Starting things off, game one. Well, let's, uh, let's get some news to start <laughs> things off. Artisan immediately <laughs> searching through the deck, and you're not going to see any of those borders <laughs> that you're looking for. Is this where you just draw a frowny face? I certainly may. Yep. All right, Artisan lets you search for a basic Pokemon that doesn't have a rule box. So we're going to see something like that Mew or something like a Charmander just to get a little bit more of a setup here. But again, just being able to search your deck for free, essentially, getting to take a look at those prize cards, always valuable information. And it's really going to shape how you're going to play these next couple of turns. Yeah, it's, it, it tends to be an advantage uh, going first with the, the Charizard deck. If you have the Rotom V, this is a card that allows you to get some additional resources into the hand, start to build up immediately after seeing that this is not going to be a card that you can find. You start to worry. There's not much else that you can do other than continue to find some basic Pokemon, find the, the Charmander, and start to build up. Or you can always go for this Mew. If you have the energy to retreat, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume it's there. You, you would hope so. <laughs> that wouldn't be great. <laughs> Caleb writing basically a novel in those notes with all the Pokemon prized here. This game one does have the fire energy. So there we see the retreat to the Mew and Mysterious Tail is going to be used. Finds that battle VIP pass. Who Doesn't need to look the at the other cards. That's right. That is exactly what you're looking for. Right in the window can lead to some Charmanders finding the board. I mean, that's all you really can get, right? There <laughs> that's is, all that's there, left. There's nothing else left. <laughs> well, I guess... Was it? Yeah, it's it's not it's not looking great. Maybe Manaphy could could join the party, which no could be a big card in the next couple of turns here. Yeah, if it weren't for a Radiant Greninja in the prize card. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny finds Nest Ball for the turn. He's going to start things off with the R Zone himself. Again, it's a stadium, so both players get to use it, and it's going to benefit Vinny here greatly. And here we see taking a look through the deck yet again. Figuring out those prize cards. We're going to see that Radiant Greninja in the prize cards. Maybe a little sad. Of course, get that opening resource check. You see the importance of those jet energies. It's something that every uh, Giratina player has come to love at this point in time. It's, it's a great way to get those early flower selectings, potentially work in the abyss seeking. If you uh, don't expect your opponent to have that aggressive start, and you can really start to build up that loss zone, which leads to all of those incredible attacks that we've seen the Giratina V-Star players use throughout the last few events. We see a good grip of energies that Vinny has available to him. They're going to be very important as the game goes on with Mirage Gate being one of the best utility cards in a deck like Lost Zone Giratina, just charging up your Pokemon as fast as possible. Now, other than the Nest Ball in hand, can't really see too much of what Vinny has to work with. Looks like in Vinny's list, it is uh, a lot of the switch cart options. We've seen players bounce around from playing the switches, the escape ropes, whatever it may be. So uh, with the switch cart option, just those four copies, it's not going to be any options to potentially target down one of those Charmander or Pidgey on that early opening turn with the Cramorant. Just the knockout on the Mew, potentially. Yeah, and any pressure that you can apply is very valuable at this point. If you can knock out this Mew, that leads to potentially a, a rare candy that is missed, which could have opened up the avenue to uh, Pidgeot and who knows what from there. Another thing to point out about the Switch card, it cannot move evolved Pokemon. So Giratina V-Star, if it's stuck in the active spot, it's going to be a little bit harder to get out of there except for something like a Jet Energy. Artisan finds the Comfe, and then Nest Ball goes ahead and grabs that Cramorant. Be interesting to see if Vinny has access to a Colorus's experiment in hand. It does not look like it. I think all four are in the deck here. Yeah. Double of, Giratina V in hand. Yeah, a lot of the Giratina pieces already being held onto. Maybe Flower Selecting can help out at this point. It's not looking the greatest. Yeah, these Flower Selectings are going to be big. And if Vinny has to rely on those to try to find Colossus Experiment, it's never where you want to be, but at least you still have a chance. Giratina, as a deck, doesn't really have access to Lost Vacuum to be able to artificially inflate the, the Lost Zone count like some other Lost Box decks are able to do so. And here's the top two. Two energies. Grass and a Psychic. 
take a look at the notes real quick, see which ones you have more of. Yeah, we've seen Vinny do this a few times now where he chooses to bench these Pokemon before using the flower selecting. I'd like to see him hold off on that, although it likely doesn't matter in situations like this. You can always hold on, gain that information, and then play down those Pokemon. Avery here is going to be used just to draw three cards. Only three bench Pokemon on Caleb's side, and that means no course experiment, but he does find one for next turn. It looks like Battle VIP Pass was found as well. So with that final bench spot, he could add an additional Pokemon before the flower selecting, but Ooh. wants to leave the space open. Two energy yet again for this flower selecting. And now that means a Psychic and a Water in the Lost Zone. He goes ahead and grabs that Jet Energy for future use and just passes the turn. Caleb's going to start with the Artizone. Be interesting to see if we have the combination of Rare Candy Pidgeot EX, Rare Candy Charizard EX. It's always what these Charizard players love to do on turn two. Yeah, it seems like a difficult thing to do so often. We've talked about evolving being a challenge. So many players don't want to uh, bother themselves with that and finding Rare Candies. But no, you have to go find Rare Candy Pidgeot and then Rare Candy Charizard so often. There is oh. a Rare Candy, which <laughs> Caleb almost <laughs> stopped in his tracks right there after seeing it. But Rare Candy and Ultra Ball are the cards available. Caleb has that Charizard EX in hand. So we could see a quick Charizard here. But again, <laughs> we've seen a lot of these players today uh, just kind of take it slow. Yeah. I mean, think about if Arvin was a successful card right now. If, if you were able to search out for Seal Stone and then use that effect and uh, be able to search out an additional card easily, we would see Rare Candy Pidgeot, Rare Candy Charizard, full board setup, and the unlikelihood of all of this happening because you prized both of those Pokemon. It's very unfortunate. But sure enough, Caleb, still in an okay spot, has the turn two attack ready to go. And I think we're still going to be able to see this Rare Candy Pidgeot, Rare Candy Charizard here. It's going to have to discard a little bit of resources, but has that free discard in that Tech Machine Devolution. Countercatcher goes to the wayside as well. Now it's going to be big, setting up this Pidgeot EX. It's so important in this match. Yeah, it's such a helpful card to continue to find those additional resources, set up the Charizard EXs, and start to apply some pressure, as right now we've only seen two cards in the Lost Zone for Vinny. We have not seen a Colrus's Experiment. Obviously, it was the Avery last turn. So the pressure of these Giratina V, you don't feel that yet. Infernal Rain does its thing. Three energy onto the board. He's going to be able to retreat into this Charizard, and Kale's going to take a knockout on a Comfey. Not really what you want to take a knockout on, but Vinny only having two cards in the Lost Zone, it's going to be a little bit harder to build up that big count that you need for Mirage Gate, Star Requiem. Yeah, poor Comfy didn't deserve the <laughs> burning darkness to start things off, but sure enough, that is how it goes. And Vinny, thankfully, has that Colrus Experiment this time around. Start to load up this Lost Zone. But you're, you're staring down a, a lot on the other side. Oh. Looking at these five cards from Colrus's Experiment, there's Mirage Gate. I think there's another Colrus, Giratina V, Nest Ball, and Sableye. So you got to at least keep that Colrus's Experiment. Yep, that one of Sableye can also be an important card to try to incorporate to knock out some of these lower hit point Pokemon at the end of the game, whatever's uh, sticking around. So we'll see if that is a valued card. The thing you also have to be careful about is just losing your last Giratina V, Charizard EX is a deck that eventually will be able to take those big one-hit knockouts. Yeah, the debate now is, will you ever have time to set up three Giratina V-Star? And the answer to that is no. Then he's going to throw one of those into the Lost Zone. Flower Selecting is going to be able to put five in the Lost Zone now. Battle VIP Pass, easy decision. We do see a V-Star get evolved. I think there's a Jet Energy in hand that you can use to bring the Cramorant up, maybe soften the Charizard. You can also Jet Energy this Comfey, get an extra Flower Selecting out of it. Yeah, I think I like that a lot more. Just 
You realize that you did not accomplish very much on your first turn going second. Two cards in the Lost Zone is not going to get the job done. So at least with six in the Lost Zone, next turn that Colrus Experiment along with both of these Comfys would lead to ten cards for the potential to use Star Requiem if you need to, if it was a brand new Charizard, what have you. But Lost Impact should be ready to go too. Here we see potentially the Jet Energy. But Penny is really debating about it. All right. Come fate to the active flower selecting yet again. Path to the peak Colrus's experiment. You already got the one Colrus's experiment in hand, so might as well grab that path to the peak and potentially stop a quick search. Maybe save it in hand for something like a Roxanne. Yeah, we've seen Vinny value the, the path to the peak over the course of the tournament, but I feel like trying to cash in on any point to slow down your opponent is going to be valuable. This seems to be one of those times. He does play four copies, which we usually see three of in most Giratina lists. Caleb does have boss's orders in hand. Iono. Other than that, not much. I guess Artisone for the Stadium Bump. Yep, Stadium Bump along with the Iono to draw new cards if, you, if you'd like. You're not asking for much in this situation. Obviously, with the, uh, the reactivation of Quick Search, setting up another Charizard should be pretty easy. If you want to just evolve that into a Charmeleon and find another Charmander, you can play that game too. Look at this, Rotom Ooh. is uh, pretty important in this spot as just a, a Pokemon V that can eventually hold onto a Force Seal Stone for Caleb. It's, it's not like you're going to take turns off. No, not at all. Here we see Quick Search after the Iono. Go ahead and potentially just try to set up another Charizard. You have that Force Seal Stone to have an easy path out. Always weird searching your deck for any card to grab a card that searches your deck for any card, but it's useful. Yep, you're uh, you're just you're just building a machine that eventually can't be stopped, as you'll have access to searching out a way to counter a path to the peak, which doesn't seem like something you should be able to do. Other than that, there's not much else that Caleb really could grab here that's going to benefit him this turn. Yes. You can see the debate. It's, you can either prepare yourself for the following turn, have the, the Forest Seal Stone onto the Rotom, or you can search out Charmeleon, have that Pokemon ready to go, just one evolution line away. Did he grab the Charmeleon? Is that what the final decision was? Oh, yeah. All right. It's going to allow him to evolve this Charmander on the bench and set up just an easy evolution. Oh, oh no, he super surprised rock. us. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These quick hands. <laughs> kind of just uh, <laughs> expecting the knockout here on this Charizard EX in the active spot, and you can shuffle back those energies away into the deck. Remember, there is only six fire in Caleb's list. Vinny has that Sableye. He saved off that Colrus's experiment. Important thing to note that Charmander does have 70 HP, so no easy two prize KO with Lost Mine on the board. And Vinny having another Colrus's experiment in hand. It's going to be eight in the Lost Zone, Flower Selecting in the Active Nine. So as long as we see a Switch Carton, I believe there's two in the hand for Vinny. 10 is an easy number to grab this turn. And wow, Flower selecting the fine courses experiment. Oh, that's right. It was Iono. <laughs> it got yeah. put to the bottom. So very big find with that Flower selecting. Yeah, this is finally starting to load up the, the loss zone here. Vinny's finding opportunities maybe if the uh, Mirage Gates line up. We do see those, but two Psychic Energies in the hand should be still fine to have all the resources for the knockout, but are you able to set up maybe some additional energies onto another Giratina so that you're not as susceptible to Iono again? It's going to be a pretty big decision for Vinny. Still is going to have to use one more flower selecting, potentially. Here we do see that Mirage Gate. Grass and Psychic on the Giratina V-Star, so Lost Impact's probably going to be the attack for this turn. Go ahead and save a couple of your resources. 
I'm not sure there's much else to work with in the hand. We saw the path to the peak as an additional card that you could play down, try to disrupt your opponent. We see in Caleb's hand, he's got multiple answers to that. Yeah. Usually, uh, if you don't have an answer for it, you're going to find one off the quick search the turn prior. Yeah, there's no real way to continue building onto your board state here. It's just the jet energy to promote this Pokemon in the active spot, or you could maybe use some switch cards and try to w incorporate one more flower selecting. It's not going to be the case this time around. Jet Energy brings the Giratina V-Star to the active. And just like that, Vinny able to pull together an attack here. Second Psychic Energy going to the Law Zone. Already having the two in hand. And there we go. Lost Impact for the knockout. Vinny tying things up. Four to four prizes here. Clearly, you expect to see this on the other side if you're Caleb. And you you had the opportunity to build up with that Charmeleon or uh, potentially even find the Charizard if you wanted that turn. You know that you have the, the, the counter to this play. You can start to build up another Charizard. But the problem is that you're not knocking this Pokemon out. So from here, can you work in an answer to maybe knock out that Giratina V on the bench? Nine. We'll see if the cards are going to line up for a spot like that. We do see Luminion in the hands. but. Over overplaying all of these cards leads to situations where you could just be left with one Charizard. That's a nightmare situation. Can't do that. Especially with Star Requiem ready to go on Vinny's side of the board. And not being able to take a knockout on that V-Star. That is the one thing about Charizard EX. It does a lot of damage, but it requires your opponent to start winning a little bit first. Arvin seems to be the supporter here for Caleb, so just going to do what you can. Get that Forest Seal Stone, get Rare Candy, potentially. Maybe another way to grab a Charmander here. You can see access to the Choice Belt, which would still leave you 10 short in this situation. Wonder... It, uh, it looks pretty difficult to potentially even work in like a Radiant Charizard in a spot like this, but... Yeah, especially what's in the prize cards. Yeah, that would be real <laughs> bad. <laughs> but these are all situations that Vinny would be thinking of, too. Yeah. All right. Arvin did find that Forest Seal Stone and Rare Candy. Lost Vacuum is going to get rid of the switch from Caleb's hand to get rid of that path to the peak. And then we're going to see that quick search. There is just so many cards that search your deck for basically any card in this deck. It's one of the reasons why it's one of the most played decks in the format right now. Yeah, you see Charizard added to the hand. Rare Candy Charizard is ready to roll, and you can search out the Charmander. Maybe this is a situation where you can... Uh, load some of those fire energies onto your Charmander, just fire breathing, tempt your opponent to uh, take this knockout. <laughs> you, you, you don't really feel like sending up uh, th this Charizard in right into the, uh, the Star Requiem. Yeah, that's not really what you want to be doing here, but the two energy on that Charizard EX, almost signaling we're just going to see a Burning Darkness this turn. Of course, four to four prize cards. The damage is helpful, but it seems like it gives Vinny an opportunity to, to start to load up maybe a second Giratina V-Star, which could be very dangerous from that point. And there is the retreat. Burning Darkness. It's not going to be enough, though. Just 240 damage, like you were saying. 10 damage away with a Choice Belt. Just like that. Vinny is in a pretty good position here. Has the Psychic Energy in hand to be able to pull off a Star Requiem, take the knockout, and with just a simple loss impact on something like that Rotom V or Pidgeot EX on the bench, Vinny can seal up game one. Yeah, you see Caleb down to one card in hand, has the Force Seal Stone for next turn, but there is not much if you can knock out this Charizard, which clearly is available. You have the Psychic Energy ready to go. All it requires is just announcing Star Requiem. 
can't play the you're Switch card. You're in a great spot. That's an evolved Pokemon, as we've mentioned <laughs> before. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. But once more, this is... Uh, we've talked about the Path to the Peaks. Th this is going to be another that you can play down and disrupt your opponent. Pokey Gear here finds a boss's orders for Vinny. That means both are in hand. Trying to find a Colorless Experiment, but has burned through quite a few of those. Doesn't have access to Roxanne. Just not yet. I, I really think it's just play play that Psychic. You can Mirage Gate if you want. I don't know if the resources are available in the deck for I mean energies. It's, but it's just Grass Energy at this point. Oh, there is a Super Odd. Super Odd to help, but... You can't work any of the psychic energies in. We see the fourth one in hand, the other two that were in the law zone. Maybe so you could get the water energy loaded up. This is still fine. Just getting two energy on that Giratina V is what you need to do to prep for a potential Iono from your opponent. I mean, there's there's shenanigans that you can perform here. Like You, you, could, you could choose to boss's orders, knock out the Rotom, play Path to the Peak, lock out the Pidgeot, and just say, knock me out with this Charizard. You walk into a Star Requiem next turn if I have Giratina V-Star. If you choose to go that route, you're really banking that your opponent needed that for Seal Stone, which they've proven they needed. Yeah, just one card in hand for Caleb. And I think with the way the energy is being placed, that's what Vinny is trying to do here. Three on the active, boss's orders pulled to the front of the hand. Yeah, it, looking at the situation, it, it feels bad. <laughs> like, nobody thinks this Rotom is a threat, but the fact that it opens the deck up once more is so dangerous. I mean, it was the point of contention about prizing both of the Pokemon V, turning off those four Seal Stones in the early turns. Clearly, the third energy here makes you think that Vinny is up to something. And my favorite stadium getting played, Path to the Peak, yet again. This is the third copy of four. And three Comfe on the bench trying to help this draw a little bit. And Boss's orders. Yeah, the decision is still left to be made. You, it has if, to be Rotom, right? Well, that's the thing. If you think that the stadium is in hand, then... You can go after the Pidgeot and leave it just up to the Seal Stone. But I feel like the Rotom was an opportunity where you really could cash in on that path, locked in. Your opponent just has to attack. And then you have an opportunity to just play down that last Psychic Energy, find the, the Giratina with those multiple Switch cards in hand. It almost guarantees that you're going you're gonna to take the win there. And it was pretty crazy. The one card in Caleb's hand, Collapse Stadium. Unreal. Like, it is, it is some great reads between these players trying to find the right lines here. Two prizes left for Vinny. Caleb is going to start the turn with that star alchemy from Forest Sealstone, thanks to Rotom. Finding that Iona, hoping that it sticks for these next few turns. And can you imagine how excruciating that Iono is on the other side for Vinny? You have the psychic energy that you'll need for the Giratina V, multiple switching effects. All of those go to the bottom of the deck. You only see two cards. And once more, you have this unchecked Charizard in the active spot. It's got to be rough for sure. Iono, Collapse Stadium. Burning Darkness doing more than enough damage to knock out anything on Vinny's side of the board. Still needs a Giratina V-Star to even win next turn. There's that Collapse Stadium. Path to the Peak to the discard, along with a Comfe. And a big Iono here. Four cards for Caleb. Finds Boss's orders which could seal up the game next turn. Well, I'm very interested to see what Vinny has found in this spot. Just two cards to look at. So many great resources to the bottom of the deck. Level Ball is going to find a Charmeleon that you can evolve into. But again, it is all on this Charizard EX in the active spot for Caleb here. I 
I guess if you really want, you can retreat into the Charmeleon and attack with it. But it's just a lot of energy is being used up. Yeah, I think we're okay here with two yeah. cards. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. right. Three cards with the card for turn. You have access to flower selecting. Let's see if Vinny can pull off here. Nest ball. Roxanne. Like Roxanne is found. That starts to open up some draws. Path to the peak played down. Grass energy was found. You can counter Whoa. catch up the Rotom. Okay, here we go. Roxanne's going to be able to shuffle the deck, so those cards that are on the bottom, then he can go ahead and try to find. Needs Psychic Energy, Switch Out, and Giratina V-Star to be able to win game one here. Is Roxanne a lie? We've, yep. we've seen it time and time again. We've been asking this question so often. Mirage Gate, uh, Jet Energy. There's a lot of cards that could help. Psychic Energy. Psychic. But Ooh. no V-Star. No switching effect either. There's the Mirage Gate. But I think Vinny drew the rest of the energy in the deck. Oh, big point of contention. You can't counter catch her. Oh, They're both two, two. It's 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. <laughs> what, are, what are we thinking? Oh, no. Because that means the counter catcher is supposed to be in the deck. Yep. And, and when this you might go lead. to play the Roxanne. Yeah. And we're at 2-2 two, two prizes. Oh, no. This might lead to a double prize loss. And if that is the case, that means Caleb wins this game. Wow. Yeah, that's so unfortunate. Obviously, I was so focused in on the Roxanne. Can, can you imagine if he draws the right cards and then you see this kind oh, of catching thing? Yeah, <laughs> at least it was the wrong cards. All right. We're going to wait for this judge ruling, but wow. Yeah, you, you have to expect that this is a situation where you see a two-prize penalty. Yeah, the, the thing you have to realize, too, Caleb finished his match very quickly, 2-0 had basically an hour of downtime while watching Vinny's game. Mm -hmm. Vinny maybe had like a five-minute bathroom break. <laughs> yeah, and, and had to work his way through a world champion yeah. on the other side, a two-time international champion. That's a lot of pressure. Obviously, so many rounds of Pokemon to get to this point. You had to play 15 Swiss rounds, and then two more rounds here to get to the finals. This is your 18th match of Pokemon over the course of the weekend. And then you find this situation. It's definitely a tough position to be in, especially in the finals here. This game has been so close, too. Yeah, it's um, it's been so well played. I feel like we've seen a lot of awkward draws for Vinny, and he's been able to manage to sequence together what almost was a, a beautiful comeback there to take the win, found the Roxanne. You easily could find the right cards there. You find the Giratina V-Star, a Psychic Energy, a way to move this Pokemon when you've held onto all those Switch cards throughout the entirety of the game. It didn't have to be Rotom. You, you have yeah, Star it, Requiem. It, could have been it, it would have been Charizard. It would have been completely fine. But He's just trying to thin out as many cards as possible. Yeah, you, you feel like in that situation, you've been, you're, you're down so much because of the way that the game is played that you, you just move the Rotom up and think, okay, that's one additional resource. My opponent would have to find an energy or a switch to move this if I do end up missing. And just, uh, just miss that. Judge is explaining it to Vinny now, but with the way the body language is, you have to expect this penalty coming. All right. Yeah. Well, yep. it worked out anyway. Caleb had the win on the following turn, and it looks like Vinny is going to choose to go second in game two. All right. Yeah, we see uh, if this did play out the way, well, um, obviously the hand is different with all yeah. the counter catcher, but Caleb shows that he had the boss's orders. He was going to take the win the very next turn, whatever uh, the situation would have been. What a close game that we had to open this up. Obviously, not the way either of these players imagined the first game closing in this Masters Finals here in Charlotte. But this is an opportunity for them to uh, to breathe, take a second, 
shuffle up and get ready for this next game. And uh, we'll see how Vinny approaches this after seeing what a, a the, the, the way that Caleb approached the matchup. Well, it started out with a ton of Pokemon in the prize cards for Caleb and a few of those important Pokemon in the prizes for Vinny. But a turn to Charizard EX and Pidgeot EX able to clean up a Comfey knockout. And from there, 110 damage with that Cramorant, but another knockout. Caleb going down to four prize cards just like that. But Vinny has that Mirage Gate, Giratina V-Star, able to loss impact that Charizard EX for the return KO, tying things up. But again, the power of just having that path bump for Caleb, getting another Charizard EX in play, damaging that Giratina V-Star. And this is where we thought it was starting to take a turn. Path to the Peak, boss's orders on that Pidgeot EX, giving Vinny the clear route to victory, drawing the Roxanne from the flower selecting, but this is where that big mistake happened. Counter catcher, when both players are at two prize cards. Got to make sure to count your prize cards for counter catcher. Yeah, it's uh, it's certainly something that uh, you have to think about. Maybe that's just something uh, along with just being at the big stage too, looking over at the prize cards. They're they're on the other side of the table. It feels foreign to you when you get to this spot. But we can leave that behind us now. It looks like Vinny is working with a pretty solid hand here in game two. Maybe the prize cards will work with us here. Double switch card. We didn't even have to use them last game. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Leave them at the top then. We're fine. On the other side, we see the mana feet for Caleb. That could be something to worry about, especially if we see an explosive start from Vinny. Well, this is not a good looking hand for Caleb here. Drachi start has a Charmander that was drawn off the top. Fire energy, just the pass of the turn. Things are going to be pretty wide open for Vinny to take advantage of this. Colors' experiment to start things. Wow. Radiant Greninja. Energy, Path to the Peak, Colors Experiment, Giratina V. Can we just swap hands? This, yeah, I mean, this this hand looks lovely. And, ooh, it's oh. going to be the Water and the Radiant Greninja with the Manaphy and the Prizes. Obviously doesn't have that information, but you, you see some pretty beneficial cards on the other side. You want to hold on to those. Flower Selecting is going to be pretty big here. Battle VIP Pass found off the top. And that's exactly what Vinny needed. Is eyeing down a boss's orders, but yeah, you can't take that right now. That, I'm a little perplexed looking at this hand. It looks like there's no energy, and uh, yes, you have the switch card, but it didn't even leave an opportunity to go into abyss seeking if this battle VIP pass wasn't a hit. Yeah, honestly, I think we're going to be seeing a Comfey and a Cramorant and potentially just trying to switch cart into the Comfey and find maybe an energy to retreat into the Cramorant, take a knockout. Other than that, Vinny's going to be doing much of the same of just passing the turn here. We've already mentioned the escape rope, not a card to look for, so Charmander will be safe this turn. How do you like that uh, exclusion for a lot of these Giratina lists now? It made a lot of sense until it didn't. And then uh, we've, I've, I think that Giratina players are now at a consensus where you need to play one so that you have the opportunity to get lucky. Yeah. Because you see this so often when uh, the Gardevoir players know that you don't play it, they promote the Radiant Greninja. They let it absorb a shot. Uh, when uh, Charmanders are left on the bench unchecked, this turns into problems. And you like to have that opportunity to potentially take a relevant knockout as opposed to just any knockout on the opening turn. Well, it does look like Cramorant and Comfey are going to be the Pokemon selected off this Battle VIP pass. Vinny taking one last look at the resources available, writing those notes down. Losing the Greninja is just so big here because not only is it a great attacker in a matchup where your opponent prizes Manaphy, but it's just a great resource and be able to get you more cards in hand with that concealed cards. Yeah, knowing where your energies are when your opponent consistently is I using Iono is going to be a benefit too. You can, uh, all you need to find is a Super Rod, and then that uh, reactivates those for Mirage Gate or whatever it may be. And we saw the clunkiness of those cards being in the Lost Zone or it stuck in the hand. Just meant that you can accelerate those energies later on. Switch cart to the second Comfey here. Flower Selecting is going to put four cards in the Lost Zone. Energy Ooh, to the Lost I'm Zone. That assuming means that's jet. another energy. Yep. <laughs> now, 
Hmm. It was risky, clearly. We know the prize cards. There's two switch cards in there. There's only one switch card remaining for the rest of the game if you don't touch the top two prize cards. All right, Kyle, is there a route to just jet energy abyss seeking here? If you're Cramorant and take the knockout, that means just a choice belt would be able to clean up this Giratina and a V on the bench potentially. Yeah, it's dangerous, but also your opponent hasn't shown you anything. Maybe applying that pressure and not giving your opponent the extra turn or whatever it may be could be a, a strong route. Caleb's shown nothing so far. I believe there's an Arvin in hand, so paired along with that rare candy, you can get a Charizard, but there's no Sadium bump, at least from the first glance. And you can see how this deck just looks completely different when you don't have oh. the Arvin into the battle VIP pass. There is a Lost Vacuum in hand, so this Arvin will be able to net a Charizard EX for Caleb, thanks to uh, Ultra Ball. You're going to have to give up a lot of resources for it, and I think Caleb is just going to be left with a Boss's Orders in hand, maybe? Yeah. Just maybe a four Seal Stone? I mean, the cards you talked of to knock out a Giratina V will be available next turn, but <laughs> you're, you start to worry about uh, getting to that point. There's no other Pokemon being added to the board. Yes, you have a lot of hit points. Your opponent's at four cards in the Lost Zone, so seeing uh, your opponent reach 10 seems pretty difficult, especially knowing that we see all those Switch cards gone. But this is the fifth card in the Lost Zone now. Well, there it is. Lost Vacuum getting rid of that Choice Belt, finding that Path of the Peak to the Lost Zone. Ultra Ball grabbing that Charizard EX. Rare Candy, Infernal Rain. Just going to grab one oh, Fire this. Energy here. And it is this lone Charizard X against the world. He's all in with this Charizard. Nothing else to show. Just the boss's orders in hand. I'm sure you have the knockout on this Cramorant. But I feel like if you're Vinny, there's a bit of a sigh of relief there. Seeing no other setup, you just have to work your way through this Pokemon and hope your opponent does not find a good card in the prizes or off the top of the deck. Foxhand's not going to do it, but thankfully Vinny has, of course, his experiment. This is going to put seven in the Lost Zone and wow. finds a Mirage Gate in these five cards. A couple yeah. Grass Energy go along with it. There's the Jet Energy, too. And you start to wonder about how many cards you can actually get into the Lost Zone here if you have access to the last Switch card and that Jet Energy. Uh, a Mirage Gate onto the Giratina V, a eventual V-Star, could actually reach Star Requiem. We're at seven now, so... Mirage Gate here, going to charge up that Giratina V that's been on the bench. We'll put the energies on oh. the other one, because at least that one can evolve. No. Okay. That's, that could be pretty big here. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm worried about that. Imagine hitting all of the right resources here. Well, I already used my one time, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, looks like. Shred. Shred which is also scary, because <laughs> what if you find Choice Belt? <laughs> no, well, Choice Belt's in the Lost oh, Zone. Oh, duh. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Caleb opted to keep the boss's orders okay. over the Choice Belt no, you're here. right. So this is a pretty safe play from Vinny. Shred, 160 damage on that Charizard EX. Caleb has basically nothing. Boss's orders in hand. Radiant Charizard. Oh, Iona was Iono. the card from the prizes, though. Charmander found, but that's it. At least you're going to have another Charizard potentially next turn, yep. thanks the to that Arvin. Charmander is the bare minimum that you needed in order to continue playing the game here. All right. Burning Darkness, 210 damage on that Giratina V. Caleb really wishing he had that choice belt. Vinny draws for turn switch cart. Ooh, that can be actually yeah. used to heal this damage. That's the last one, too. And the other two still at the top of the prizes. Healing off this Pokemon could assist from avoiding awkward uh, Charmander interactions if you're not able to evolve. Third come Fey. And the hand is looking like a Mirage Gate, so... There's certainly potential to attack with the other Giratina, and uh, you can save yourself the awkwardness of potentially being knocked out by a Pokemon that isn't a Charizard EX. Uh, oh. 
All right, I think they're just clarifying the damage done by Charizard X. Always scary when the judge starts talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what did I do this time? <laughs> Jet Energy, Switch Cart. There's that V Star. Again, Vinny knows that this is the last switch cart available to him so far. He's really trying to hold it, but there it goes. Switch cart to the Giratina V-Star here. Now it looks like it's going to be a lost impact to take the knockout. Could have done it with Shred, but then, then again, you just kind of walk yourself into a potential Charizard DX attack. No path to the peak, which well, is really big. Yeah, the issue with the Shred is you're... 160, 160, oh, you'll right. actually reach there. So oh, that is true. You have to throw away all those additional energies. <laughs> what, what a wild <laughs> way to get to game three. This has been a crazy set that we've had so far. I don't think anyone's like truly satisfied with the way that their game has played out. Caleb yeah. has had uh, uh, a setup where he didn't have any of his V Pokemon and somehow was able to establish a beautiful board. Vinny has had opportunities where he's had multiple turns to set up Giratina V's V stars and have a checkmate, drew nothing, and then <laughs> accidentally throws it away with the custom catcher. And then Caleb just sets up one Charizard, but that's all his hand lets him do. You see it here. It's an easy knockout for Vinny on the opening turn. Uh, played to his outs, found the Kramer at knockout, which did not seem likely at the start of the turn. But Caleb plays everything out, rare candies into the Charizard, takes the KO, and Vinny just plays it cool, calm, and collected takes this knockout on the Charizard. Caleb realizes there's no way that you're gonna come back from a situation like this. Let's just use all the time we have left to play a great game three and see who can be the champion here in Charlotte. Yeah, plenty of time left for this game three. And it is gonna be hopefully one for the record folks here. Yeah, I mean, this has potential. We've seen really interesting ways to play Pokemon so far. A lot of crazy setups. I can only imagine what they have in store for us here. Maybe it'll look more like Giratina V-Star and Charizard <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know what we just saw over the last two games. Two Ooh, rare two candy, candy two and... Two oh, three no! You can't do what this. is going on here, Kyle? <laughs> I don't have any octaves left. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how you play this game. Game three alert here, but we got an alert for Vinny. There's no Giratina V <laughs> in the deck. You're kidding me. He has two, he has two Giratina V star in hand. This is the worst thing that could happen. It is all on Cramorant's shoulders here. This is unbelievable. I, I'm at a loss for words, Ka. There's two Giratina V-Star in hand. He potentially could have had a full setup, had all these Pokemon ready to roll. He has the battle VIP pass. He has the Kumpei. He sees his opening hand, and it's not the worst. It's workable. And then you get this news after playing the best card in the format of battle VIP pass. This just, there, it how is. do you get out of this? I, I'm not sure if you can, honestly. You're up against he, a fish on the <laughs> other side, and you already know that your odds are sub 10%. It is all going to be on this Cramorant and potentially Sableye to try to find an early knockout and just grab any of those Giratina from the prize cards. You have to go for the most rapid setup, play like Lost Zone Box with no fun Pokemon, and just comfe chain together and work towards a very aggressive Sableye, early Cramorant, try to draw prizes, find the Giratina. You have to find at least one of them. But this is terrifying if you're Vinny. Yeah, especially if Caleb gets any form of a setup, a simple Pidgeot, just to box his orders, the Giratina that Vinny finds off the prize cards, taking two prize cards potentially, that means an easy knockout. And 
it is just not looking good for Vinny, and we haven't even gotten through turn one yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I've looked over at Caleb's hand. He will be able to play Pokemon. It is not just Fish, but Vinny, he has his work cut out for him. And a Super Rod going to the Lost Zone. That's going to be one of the vital resources and just trying to reuse this Cram Ramp. Jet Energy brings up a Comfey. Flower selecting yet again. Jet Energy to the Lost Zone. And I think Poke Gear found. I mean, that's all you can ask for from this setup. You have the option to find a Colrus Experiment next turn. Maybe you can start attacking into your opponent and set up a way to knock out this Pokemon. Draw two prizes. If you draw two Giratina at the same time, you avoid that boss scenario. You're asking for so much. Your opponent has Arvin going second. <laughs> this Arvin is going to find Battle VIP Pass and potentially Forest Seal Stone. I think there's already Forest Seal Stone in the hand for Caleb. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Uh, this is going to be a great setup here for Caleb, doing what this Arvin Zard wants to do each and every game going second. The, the crowd went wild seeing those prizes. Does, does Caleb know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's put it together that this was not the ideal setup? You have to suspect at least there's, something There's here. something wrong here. Your yeah. opponent went for turn one going first Cramorant. Yeah. That's not correct. This is crazy. Now, we saw some bad prizes in the final game of Portland Regionals, but John Ng was able to overcome that with a turn two knockout to seal things up. Yeah, he had Not gonna at least here. one Tino to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Battle VIP pass finds Mew and Charmander, most likely. It's crazy. Is there a fire energy to work with in this hand? Obviously, you consider that re retreating into the Mew, finding those additional resources. You think about what another Battle VIP Pass would do for a hand like there this. Is. This is unbelievable. To start with the Luminion, it never feels great, but then you have the potential to have a near-perfect setup against a struggling opponent. It looks like at least Rare Candy which you should likely be holding on to this game. I don't expect to see anything from Vinny's side. I think with the Arvin in hand, that means it's a pretty good choice to maybe play that Forest Seal Stone down and just use that for the Battle VIP pass. Arvin can guarantee something like a Lost Vacuum the next turn. Absolutely agree. There's a potential to just get all of your boards set up. You have the Ultra Ball Rare Candy. You can continue to build on the setup that you have. For next turn. Yeah, don't need that choice belt, Caleb. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> yeah, you, you will not see a Pokemon V likely unless uh, Vinny turns up the Jets. Ultra Ball discards both of those tools for Caleb. Going to be able to find another Charmander here. And it'll be interesting to see if he does use that for a Seal Stone or if he wants to save it for just an easy path out the following turn. Yeah, this makes me think that he's not considering the VIP anymore. I mean, it is a very powerful resource that you would have to use, but getting that full setup could be something that's pretty spectacular as well. But no, just passes the turn back. Vinny has a lot of work to do here. Flower selecting, getting three in the Lost Zone, finds the Colrus' experiment. It's going to allow that Crammer to start attacking with just a retreat here. Battle VIP pass can go away. And now you're staring down two energy switch cart path to the peak. You get a prize card. You do. Crammer could potentially find the Giratina V. The pressure is no longer on this Pokemon because the choice belt is gone. You can only you only give up one prize card. 210 damage is going to be the cap if you don't uh, take an additional prize. That gives you an opportunity to set up this Giratina V-Star. So you're saying there's a chance. There's a chance. 50% to be able to grab a Giratina V from the prize cards. We know it's also at the bottom of the prizes. Yep. Two of them, right? So One, I think. I think they were hanging out. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Retreat to 
the second come Faye. Roxanne Chorus's experiment. I don't care about Roxanne. <laughs> we, nope. we, we need to continue to build up and draw some additional resources. If we're playing to my opponent already getting down to that few of prize cards, I think the game was already lost. You always have that second resource later on. All right, is this where Caleb really <laughs> puts, think, puts the information together? I think together? he figures it out here. And that's ball. Go ahead and grab any basic Pokemon in your deck. How about a Radiant Greninja when Path of the Peaks in play? Well, there's six cards uh, in the Lost Zone. If Radiant Greninja was actually able to use Moonlight Shuriken here, that'd be unbelievable. That'd be game you over. The, you could take the knockout on the Charmanders. Does Are Vinny the, have the another card? Finding contact? the resources for that. You see the switch card, the water, the Mirage Gate in hand. But just missing that last Comfey. Just doesn't have the Comfey to do that. All right, Kyle. Spit innocently, finds there the Giratina V. All right. There is a chance. That has to be such a big sigh of relief for Vinny there. A little more curious why Vinny potentially didn't go for uh, searching out the Comfey there instead of the Radiant Greninja. Then if you find the Radiant Greninja off the Comfey, I think all the resources were there to actually use Moonlight Shuriken. But you would still already retreated for the turn. Okay, maybe you, that's you where it had to the use the switch card. So you had no guarantee. You needed basically two cards off that one flower selecting. You know what? Let's just take our Giratina V and move on from here. That is found. Caleb has the rare candy Charizard. The pressure is right back on. Lost Vacuum allows this play to happen. Infernal Rain charging up that Charizard EX and that Charmander on the bench. No Pidgey in sight, but I do believe there's a supporter in hand for Caleb. Maybe one card. No. All right. Burning Darkness Knockout. It is that Forest Seal Stone. Forest Still Seal Stone hand. and a Fire Energy with two cards remaining. Vinny finds the Comfey. Ooh, that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> Slammed it down with authority. <laughs> now, there is the potential to Moonlight Shuriken this turn. I guess you also have that Shred possibility yet again. But if you go for the Moonlight Shuriken, I would want to target down the Luminion and the Charizard here. Yeah, taking a prize card is... the. Wrong play. Absolutely yeah. off the table here. We've seen Vinny go for this before. You can cash in on the opportunity to deal this damage. But you also have an opportunity to take a knockout next turn unchecked with Star Requiem. But the problem is then how do you attack a follow-up Charizard? It becomes difficult. You usually have to cash in some early damage on the first Charizard. And because you lost the Cramorant already, Shred lines up pretty well. It does put the Giratina at risk of just getting damaged. That way, the following turn, it gets knocked out by a potential second Charizard. And I do like okay. the Moonlight yeah. Shuriken play here. Yeah, I don't mind this at all then. Yeah, you can incorporate the early damage that you'll need to soften it up for the 280 lost impact. Um, this way, you still don't take the knockout on the Charmander? Yeah, no. Because you can't, even though you really, really want to. You don't want to damage the Luminion for no reason, but maybe that turns into a Sableye knockout exactly. later yeah. on down the road. There is a good prize map for Vinny here. Has five prizes left. Needs a switch cart off these top five from Chloris. You still have flower selecting to do it as well as the concealed cards if you have an energy in hand. Oh. A few supporters, energy is not really going to do too much. There's that jet in hand, but you want to attach that water to the Radiant Greninja. I suppose even finding another Mirage Gate would lead to the third water that we haven't seen yet. You could find it that way and then attach the jet to move. I like getting rid of the Nest Ball here. There's, what other Pokemon are we looking for? That's It's only a valuable resource if you're considering Super Rod along with the Nest Ball for later on. Yeah, I guess that is an option with Cramorant. 
All right, Colch's experiment goes to the Lost Zone. Concealed cards. Do we see a switch card here? Ooh. Ooh. We do. Ooh, and a path to the peak to go with it. He already had a path in hand. But. Hey, we like more. <laughs> Countercatcher going to the Lost Zone. Don't really want to use that card anytime soon here. And there is that second water energy. Does he target down the Charmander? You have to expect oh, please, now. Please, please. I'm not ready for that, okay? <laughs> I mean, it your, seems, opponent, your opponent has two cards in hand, right? What's the possibility so of a boss's easy. orders? But we know there's a Forest Seal Stone in that hand. It's tempting. It's so tempting. But also, Luminion could be free prize cards at the end of the game. Where does this 90 damage go? Oh, you... He's really going to think about it. Look at the discard pile. Get as much information as he can. You have to suspect, too, with the Arvin being played, not grabbing the Forest Seal Stone with Luminion already in play. That has to be the last card. In Anytime Caleb's game. Caleb has two cards down, they're Ooh, amazing. He did it. All he right. Found the route. Lost, Lost vacuum. <laughs> This is insane. Now, Lost Vacuum can go ahead and get rid of that Path to the Peak, but there's no abilities going to be played for Caleb this turn. Remember, there's two Rare Candy in the prize cards. I already used the one, so it just has the one left available for this, at least this turn. There we see that Forest Seal Stone. Star Alchemy is going to grab Professor's Research here. Finally, a hand reset. Caleb is desperately been looking for this for the last two games now. Just been left with no cards of the hand. A very slow, awkward setup. Not seeing that explosion of multiple battle VIP pass and all these additional Pokemon to work with. And this has to lead to some additional threats. I'd like to see another Charmander. Maybe even that Charmeleon, Rare Candy uh, into a Charizard, whatever it may be. You also have to consider how many energies are even left. Well, we got the one in hand to attach for turn. There's that Professor's Research. Discarding the Lost Vacuum, so it was actually a bad draw here. But finding the Collapse Stadium could be another way to bump that path to the peak. Jirachi, Jirachi is big. protecting the Luminion. Caleb is going to be taking a knockout on this Radiant Greninja, so no immediate threat of another Moonlight Shuriken. Again, with just taking one prize, not going to trigger anything like a Roxanne, so the hand is still going to be safe. And Caleb does find a rare candy out of the prize cards. Just continuing to find just enough here. Similarly, similarly, Vinny, trying to do the same thing, has the Giratina V-Star. Easy the, lost impact. The unlikely Giratina V-Star. Yes. <laughs> so the knockout is simple. But what do you try to accomplish with the rest of the turn? Obviously, there are no Giratina V to bench, which would be something you potentially consider. Thankfully, this Giratina V-Star does stick around for an additional turn, so you can consider that when you're attaching energies and starting to develop your board. 270 would be the maximum. Nest Ball is going to find Sableye here. Again, with that Jirachi and its Stellar Veil, going to shut down that Lost Mine, at least for right now. Vinny does have access to another Mirage Gate. Can go ahead and grab that Psychic and Water, the last energy in the deck. Get a Psychic on that Sableye, Water on that Giratina. You have Jet Energy, and then you can remove the Water and the Jet Energy. Take the KO on the active Charizard. And with 280 HP and that Choice Belt in the discard, there's not going to be a return KO for Caleb. Exactly. He'll have the energies lined up for the Star Requiem. As soon as you see that Charizard EX from your opponent, you can take that Knockout, and then you're just eyeing up one more prize to be the champion. It is definitely well within sight here. Giratina V-Star, don't need that. <laughs> Cole's experiment found off that flower selecting. Is there a way to... Oh, not yet. Jet Energy bringing up that Giratina V-Star. 
And we're going to have a big knockout from Vinny here. It's going to net him another Giratina V as well for a little assurance. Close experiment being played. Yeah, why not at this point? Just continue to bend down on these resources. You've already used so many of them. Find Super Rod, which potentially could walk into whatever final Pokemon you may need to close out this game. It could be something as silly as Cramorant at this point, and you're just looking for one final prize in this map. Yeah, I think Boss's Orders, Super Rod, Mirage Gate are the choices off of this Colrus's experiment. Pretty good cards to have at your disposal. Oh, <laughs> if there was ever another uh, Radiant Greninja play, that would be unbelievable. <laughs> Potentially closing out, knocking out the Luminion and the Jirachi. All right, Vinny down to three prize cards to Caleb's four. Does Caleb have the return knockout here? Well, obviously not with that Giratina having just just a little bit extra HP. Oh, I mean, it doesn't look like Rare Candy Charizard is available. There is Iona, which seems like a necessity here. Well, you do have access to Arvin and the Rare Candy in hand, so that could equal the Charizard. But you know your opponent has everything. That is true. This is a desperate shot here. Four cards... Oh, my goodness. Uh, those are not four good cards There's at all. Nothing. And <laughs> oh, Jeremy, what is happening? 30 damage on Giratina V-Star. That was the turn. That was the turn. Vinny now has a good what route to impact. try to win. But this is a problem you've talked about. Plays only switch cards. Giratina V-Star in the active, basically locked in. Two cards in hand. Do you ever Requiem? Yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Charmander. And just like that, the Vi star Requiem taking the knockout on a Charmander. Vinny down to two prize cards remaining with that Luminion V just waiting to Caleb be knocked out on the bench. still needs help. He's down, what, four fire energy? Five, Five fire energy. There's one fire energy remaining. There's still the path. That's going to be countered. Artisan played. Iono once more. Four cards. Really looking fire for fire energy. Fire energy. <laughs> Caleb still has life here. Jirachi putting in a ton of work against that Sableye and its lost mind. But if Vinny has a boss's orders, it could be game. You see the shuffle reset there with the Artisan. Cards will move back from the Iono. That fire energy is unbelievable. It's exactly what Caleb needed. Setting up the chip damage onto the Giratina V-Star. A perfect knockout here. Vinny does have Sableye, but it's checked by Jirachi. There are a million Kumpe and a Dream on the other side for Vinny. Trying to close out against an army of awkward basic Pokemon. <laughs> Now, one important thing to note, both of the boss's orders in Vinny's deck were in his hand last turn, so now they're on the bottom. Thankfully, this Artizone is going to be able to shuffle the deck before any flower selectings happen. That's a great point. We'll see if Vinny picks up on that before a flower selecting. Oh, is oh. Sableye moved to the... Never mind. Oh, right. There's a boss's orders! Boss's orders brings up Luminion V, and just like that, Vinny takes it with Lost Mine and wins the largest regionals we've ever had. The Charlotte Miracle is performed. <laughs>